What's up guys, what's going on? We're on eighth grade science right now. We're gonna be looking at photosynthesis and the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Uh, this is gonna be middle school level, so we're gonna keep it more simplified uh, to only a few basic uh, molecules that are gonna be responsible for exchanging um, stuff. So one of the things that we always look at is we're looking at two different things. Uh, and uh, one of the things is gonna be the plant cell, because the plant cell obviously is the um, organism that's undergoing uh, photosynthesis. We always have the plant cell, we have that rigid cell wall, and the relationship uh, with regards to photosynthesis and cellular respiration is going to also be the animal cell. So we have these two things over here. This is our animal cell over there, all right, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Okay. So if we're thinking about a plant cell, we're thinking about what are the type of things that plant cells need? What do plant cells need to uh, help them uh, to obtain energy to go on functioning normal, normally, right? So one of the things it definitely needs is sunlight. So sunlight will enter, notice I put in the arrow, sunlight will enter into the plant cell, right? Another thing that plants need is water, right? Water helps the, uh, the physiology and the uh, physiology for the plant. So we're going to put water over here, right? And the other thing that plants really need is going to be what we call carbon dioxide or CO2. Think of carbon dioxide as the gas compound that uh, plants uh, uh, breathe in to help them undergo the process known as photosynthesis. Right? So once the plant gets the carbon dioxide, it takes the sun, it takes the water, think of it as a, a uh, they're make, uh, uh, someone making a cake. It needs specific ingredients. And when it takes these ingredients, it actually puts them all together and a process is known or, or given out as photosynthesis. When you're putting ingredients like a cake, like flour and sugar, uh, milk, and you mix them all together, you get a cake. With photosynthesis, when you take carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water, you're getting, uh, the process of photosynthesis occurs and we get what we call glucose, right? And glucose is just a, a, uh, another term for a, a sugar molecule, right? It's one of those monosaccharides, those uh, basic uh, sugar uh, molecules. And one of the byproducts, the thing that it gives off, is what we call oxygen, right? So think of a plant cell breathing in carbon dioxide, breathing out oxygen, right? And it also helps to produce the sugar, all right? So this is the process known as photosynthesis, a very general uh, idea of photosynthesis. Now let's take a look at the animal cell, right? Uh, the animal cell, in its own right, uh, needs specific molecules to help it going, to help it produce energy. Now keep in mind, remembering back to sixth grade science, that these organisms, or plant cells, are known as autotrophic, meaning that they self-feed, they feed themselves. And how do they do that? Well, they use sunlight, they use molecules such as carbon dioxide and water to help them produce photosynthesis to make sugar for themselves or energy for themselves. Right? So the plants can actually use this, this uh, uh, energy, this form of energy, to help them live. Animal cells are different. If you recall back to sixth grade science, this is, uh, our animal cells are known as heterotrophic, meaning that they can't produce their own um, food. They have to get food sources from other things, such as plants or animals. Right? So if we look at the animal cell, we have to think about what the animal cell needs in order to obtain energy. Right? We're not uh, autotrophic uh, beings. We do not stand in the sunlight and just let the sun kind of just like feed us. No, we don't do that. We have to go through uh, uh, a different, uh, different uh, uh, resource. So one of the things that we do is that we collect uh, these glucose molecules and sugar. So this arrow is going in here. So the animal cell will obtain and ingest sugar molecules or glucose. And keep in mind, anything that usually grows from the ground usually has or is made up of sugar, right? So plants usually are these type of things. I mean, nuts and oils are different. Uh, they are um, more uh, fat-based, uh, especially those polyunsaturated fats, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, and also the animal cell needs to uh, also take in the oxygen molecules. So oxygen will also go into there. Think of oxygen as the igniter that liberates the energy from these particular molecules, right? So the oxygen will go, as animal cells, we breathe in the oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So look at the arrow, the arrow is leaving us. So carbon dioxide or CO2 is actually leaving 
the uh, animal cell, right? And if we look at this glucose molecule, it's entering into it. So what the animal cell does, it, it'll take in oxygen. This oxygen will help to liberate the energy from the glucose molecules that are in here and provide the organism with energy, right? Or I'll simply, you simply put the letter J for joule, right? Joule is the uh, basic unit of energy, right? And one of the byproducts, one of the byproducts anyway, of, for the animal cell is going to be water, right? So we have this dynamic going on over here. So if we're just taking a look at this, again, we see that for photosynthesis to occur, uh, we have the carbon dioxide, we have water and the sunlight giving us, uh, going through the process of photosynthesis producing glucose molecules or sugar, right? And we have oxygen molecules as also a byproduct. The animal cell takes in the oxygen, it will take in the glucose, and it will, uh, as a byproduct, give off carbon dioxide. It'll also give off, give off uh, water molecules and also produce energy for the organism to live. This is what's known as cellular respiration, right? So as you can see, there's a, some, there's a type of symbiotic relationship going on between the plant cell and the animal cell, right? Uh, why is that? Well, a couple things. What the animal cell gives off, as you can see the animal cell, the arrow is pointing this way, carbon dioxide is leaving. This is extremely useful for the plant cell. Right? In the same respect, what the plant cell is giving up, oxygen, as you can see over here, we'll use different colors because colors seem to be a, a great way for students to learn. This is going to be uh, the oxygen molecule, what they give off, the animal cell will take in. What they produce, the um, plant cell, glucose, we will gladly take in and use as or uh, for the utilization of energy or to help produce energy. Water, uh, or one of the byproducts that we use, uh, and um, if you think about water and the water cycle, some way, somehow, water can always uh, leave our bodies some way by, you know, uh, several ways, uh, which I'm not going to discuss now, but can always be recycled back to the plant. So in some way, shape, or form, water actually can get recycled to the uh, plant as well, right? But the main point here is energy. Energy is needed for the plant. How does the plant get energy? Energy gets plant from the sunlight. How do we get energy? We get energy from eating the sugar that was produced by the plant that was originally given from the sunlight, right? So the whole process of photosynthesis is taking place in this respect over here. So we have photosynthesis and the relationship between photosynthesis and the relationship of, from plant cells and animal cells by cellular respiration. And we just have to uh, quickly look at some, some of the things that uh, uh, they give up and, they, and that we take in, right? So we can say that plant cells, right, plant cells, uh, they will be uh, responsible for taking in carbon dioxide. So we can say uh, CO2, right? Let's just make a distinction between this and this. CO2 plus sunlight, and remember sunlight, we're just looking at for sunlight in terms of energy, plus water, will give us oxygen and sugar, right? So this is what it takes in, and this is what it's giving up. What about uh, the animals? So this is going to be for our plant cells, plants, plant cells. What about uh, the animal cell? Animal cell is over here. So the, with regards to the animal cell, we have the animal cell taking in sugar plus oxygen, which is going to help to give us energy, right? And some of the byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So this is just a, a really basic mini review. So plant, animal, right? This is just a little simplified equation of this process going on. And these are some of the uh, ways that um, uh, there's this symbiotic relationship between plants and animals and the way, uh, the way these organisms seem to obtain energy. I'm out. I'll see you guys next time.